What's up, everybody? We are back. John Della Rose here, the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction with another epic collection review. I've been reading through this tail end of The Avengers. I started with the collection obsession, I believe, uh, because I was listening to the Epic Marvel podcast, which is my favorite podcast. It's epicmarvelpodcast.com. If you read that, they have great in-depth discussion of comics like you find nowhere else. And uh, that's... That's why I'm into that. So since I did that, I went through and then I read, uh, gosh, Operation Galactic Storm, which leads into this. And then they have the Gatherer Strike after this. They have a nice run of four books together in this weird era. And I'm like, this is not the most popular era where Bob Harris uh, wrote most of it. Um, you get a little bit of Grunewald work in here and we'll go into that. But, I mean, the team is Vision and Cersei and Black Widow and Hercules the Black Swordsman, and Crystal. Uh, so it's definitely a team that, you know, nobody's super inspired by. Uh, and so it was not all that uh, well-revered. Now, Grunewald and Roy Thomas wrote this beginning, which is the annual crossover, and, and Marvel had a tradition around this time of doing many annual crossovers between different books. And what happens is the epics, like, so the Captain America epic will collect just the Captain America version of this and then kind of give a recap of what's happening for the whole storyline uh but the main story is in avengers so this will all appear completely in the avengers which is great and we have the citizen kang storyline which is really neat um and this is a it ties in kang's history uh, uh captain america goes uh sort of searching uh because there's this weird town of timely wisconsin and if you know the word timely it's because Timely is the old Marvel comics. They were the original Marvel comics. Uh, and so it's a reference to that. Um, and there, it ties in that there's this inventor there who built the original Human Torch. And Captain America ends up uh, lost kind of in this like weird time, Timely, uh, which is uh, there's this time travel stuff going on here. And it ends. And the Vision, vision uh, you know, has, has gone off also. Uh, now, Kang, now they have backups in all of these also, which goes over the um, the backstory of Kang. And the and it just really lets you know who he is, reminds you of all of his past stories. They're like 10 pages each. Really useful stuff. Actually, what I did is I, I read this, and then I went through, because it's a four-parter, and I read all of the Kang backstory elements to these before going back to this, so I had a little more uh, just knowledge of who he was. And, and, of course, we're in Thor now, so Thor goes after Captain America because he's disappeared, and Thor ends up lost in time also. And then we get some more Kang backstory. We, we learn about his troubles with his, his lover and all that. Lots of good stuff. Whoops, sorry, that's, that's here. And after that, the Fantastic Four gets involved, and the Fantastic Four chases after our lost heroes and go back in time. Now, now look at this. This is like peak 90s art right here. Like, look at that. They're like, oh, I want to be Rob Liefeld, but oof, that's, uh, that's pretty rough. Okay. So we get that, and, um, you know, they get trapped back in time also. The Avengers get trapped along with them. More more, more weird 90s art um, in the Fantastic Four version. Uh, and it, it's looking dire for our heroes back in time, of course, where this goes. And then we get into the Avengers annual proper, where we get the entire Avengers annual, not just the parts of this storyline that go into this. And they fight Kang. They fight all these villains who uh, who Kang's conscripted also. And more more 90s Liefeld-style art. It's not Liefeld. It's just somebody trying to imitate that. Look at look at these look at these weird <laughs> weirdly shaped dudes. They look like little like egg pods. Um, so the art's pretty bad. The storyline's pretty thin. It's a lot of, like, you know, pin up style fights. Um, but Kang has this motivation where he's trying to rewrite time, and it actually ties in all of his backstory because all of those are just distractions or points where he's helping build this. And this is Mark Grunewald's efforts, bro. So Mark Grunewald's really into this, like, you know, continuity universe thing, and so he gets a little wonky with that at times. And... He did so here also. So he ties in all of the past stories saying that, you know, Kang went back in time at various times. And uh, it's all been leading to this as he's been attempting to uh, basically take over the 21st century, which is coming soon. Um, and he's got his lady. And what happened originally was his lady was nearly killed and put in stasis. So he was obsessed with trying to bring her back. 
um, and try to find a way. And at the end of this, spoiler, Kang gets nearly killed. And because she knows that he did it for her, really, she uh, is now swapping places with him and she's going to find a way to bring him back. So, cute ending. Uh, we have the Anarchonauts here, uh, <laughs> which is where the bad guys they, they face. This is Chronopolis. This is the the city of time that, that Kang kind of developed through this. We have an Avengers Top 10 Villains. Avengers Communicard. Aha. Uh, we get this little side story where they go out to a bar. There's a lot of going out in bars in, in actually this, uh, this volume for the Avengers. And we have another backstory of Kang as we, we kind of learn a little about what's going on there. So that was a fun little event, very enjoyable. Uh, like the art's not the best, uh, you know, I hate that 90s style, but the, and the storyline is a little thinner because it is 90s style also, but I do love the whole continuity bringing in and the backstories that involve the continuity. So, it, you know, Grunewald did a good job on that front and it was fun. That's what matters at the end of the day. So we have Vision and Wanda. And it, it turns out he's just trying to relive his past a little bit here. The Avengers have some maid here who's very bizarre looking at this point in time. And Bob Harris's uh, um, storylines are a bit slow paced. Uh, there's a lot of talking and exposition in a lot of these. And a lot of like uh, soap opera moments between the different Avengers, which I actually like. Uh, I find it kind of enjoyable. I, di I didn't, you know, it makes it makes it easier to care about these characters because you know you're you don't really care about a lot of these characters and you're like okay well at least there's something going on with them that like i care about their lives a little bit and there's this character magdalene who um there is a gal and she ended up at a bar and uh hercules recognized her as a villain and it's not actually her in this timeline it's in this timeline she is just some random gal and and her and uh and this guy are uh are kidnap and try to kill this, this version of Magdalene, and there's a mystery going on with what's going on with that. So that mystery builds. Uh, Vision goes back, and basically the, he's modeled after somebody who's died, and uh, the inventor, you know, wants to meet him one last time, and there's a little touching moment there also. Good soap opera stuff. Not a lot of action, but good soap opera stuff. Now, the art's done by Steve Epting in this era, and I really like Steve Epting's art, uh, contrary to the, the annuals. Uh, I, f I find that this art is very nice and, uh, and a very 80s style rather than 90s style. A little on the dark side, but it's all right. So good stuff here. Uh, Hercules uh, and Thor end up at a, some children's hospital to do something. And the gods try to screw with people by having Thor uh, taken over because he's now Eric Masterson and they can actually manipulate this mortal's brain. And, uh, and it's, uh, they're, they're just trying to mess with Hercules at the end of the day. And that does come back later in a second. We get a 350th issue. And I guess the 350th issue had all these covers reprinted in it. And, you know, super, super special 350th issue. The Star Jammers show up, and they're mad about uh, Operation Galactic Storm. One of them is actually being blackmailed into trying to kill one of the Avengers here by the Kree, and they have this whole knockdown dragout fight of uh, Avengers versus Star Jammers. And we get a uh, we get a Butler versus Nanny situation for a backup here, which is kind of cute story. And we get this. This I love these sorts of things. I, I, you get the mansion and the layouts of the mansion and all that. Um, and you know, this I, I want to do stuff like this in my comics, but I've been too lazy to so far because it's actually a lot of work. So I, I this is very this stuff happened in, in Jack Kirby's work a lot. So I love when I see stuff like this. Uh, let's see. It continues. We get a guest penciler here in Kevin West, who is not nearly as good as Steve Epting, as you can tell from the wonky-looking figures here. Um, and, uh, the Star Jammer series continues and gosh, man, this is, this is some rough art here, but that's what you get when you get guest artists. And eventually this works out and, um, the Star Jammers leave after, after some fights here. And in between issues, we now start to get the Marvel, uh, swimsuit editions. So yeah, look at that hunky Thor, everybody. Uh-huh. And this is issue 352. This is the only issue of Avengers I actually had as a kit. And what happened was I got this as a 
one of those like grab bags like you get you know 10 comics for five dollars you know sort of things that they had at the comic shop they did those as a gimmick at a time and they and of course it was sealed in a paper bag you'd have no idea what you'd get and this was an issue in here and i was always like oh the avengers cool and of course uh, and i'd played the avengers video game uh, captain america and the avengers so uh, which was always fun and then i looked in here and of course like i didn't recognize it i kind of recognized vision but like i'm like who are these people <laughs> as a kid um, and it wasn't very inspiring. This is a very weird storyline. This was written by Len Kaminsky and uh, M.C. Wyman, which is Fear the Reaper. Uh, it is the title piece of this. And it's a three-issue storyline where the Reaper, I guess, was dead at some point. And he comes back, and he's got this, like, Cthulhu god giving him powers. And he's got massive powers, and he kind of sucks the Avengers into this vortex where everybody's dead. And all the undead come after the Avengers, and they can't kill them. They can't stop them. It's really creepy, very horror uh, Lovecraftian story, uh, which really does not fit the vibe of the Bob Harris stuff whatsoever. So it's a strange storyline uh, that I I see why I didn't pick up the Avengers uh, from from this as a kid because it's like what is going on here? They've got all their dead villains come back to life, and here we go. Here's like the weird Lovecraftian hand god thing, and it, you get all the parts are the same. Uh, the art's fine. A uh, little uh, little light on the backgrounds, but I, I like that they're the like the old style layouts, so it's a little cleaner of a read than a lot of the stuff that they were trying to experiment with in the '90s at this point. Um, and what I mean by that is like they, you know in the '90s art does these like let's get into the Fantastic Four in here because I think that's some of the worst of it. It wasn't all that bad in this, but I've seen I've seen worse for sure. Where are we? Fantastic Four. You see how how the panels blend over each other, and and you get these weird layouts where you're almost not sure where it's going. Uh, some of it it gets worse because like when you know a couple years from now they'll start doing sideways panels and you have to turn. Uh, there's there's one later in the book you have to turn it sideways. I hate that sort of thing. It's a pain in the butt to read. So it's when it's cleaner like this I actually really appreciate it. I know I'm I might be in the minority for that because so many comics don't just follow this as much anymore look at this double page spread with this this monster that's awesome this is cool art all right um and the avengers eventually fight it off and and get out of there and we get a nice little pinned up once again in between issues and now we start this gatherer storyline which continues into the next storyline which is our the next issue called the gatherer strike the gatherers uh it starts out with all these uh avengers being killed and of course we get back to our uh regular writer and artist at this point captain america gets killed to show that it show things are weird and and they're all working for this old person cassandra i guess um and i don't know who these people are i mean i'm sure there's history with them and all that but they're working together and here's a black panther from another universe also and he's about to die and they want him to work for them and the way to save him is to actually kill and steal the life force from the real black panther in our universe Cersei, meanwhile, is starting to hook up with the Swordsman, even though the Swordsman's kind of into Crystal. Crystal's married to uh, this so, uh, Quicksilver. So there's a big, messy drama going on there. And uh, Hercules, this is a really funny one. Hercules is scared to talk to a girl. She's from the orphanage, bringing it back to a couple issues ago, which I love that Harris ties in all this stuff and actually builds issue to issue here. I like this kind of serial storytelling a lot. Um, and Steve Epting's art's nice. Again, like I said, it's a lot of soap opera drama without a lot of action. Again, you finally get into action here at, as, it, as the, the fight starts against these gatherers who disappear again, and then they go after the Black Panther in earnest in this next one. And so the Avengers get their butts whipped by these people, and eventually they figure it out and get the Black Panther out of there. Now... The Gatherers kind of just stay as a background story for the next couple issues here, and I guess they appear in the next volume, and really their plans come to fruition at that point. Um, we get some night visitors in this one, and uh, they've allowed a bunch of sort of, I think they're Italians into their kitchen at this one, and uh, and Jarvis is like, what is going on in my house? Um, it's, you know, meant for, meant for some humor. And they have a nice... Uh, Nice dinner party. Again, again, just like soap opera drama with, without lots of action. And that's why this isn't popular. I mean, it's soap opera drama with characters that like really they're like C-list or D-list characters who are in charge of the Avengers at this point for some reason. 
Um, but I like the soap opera drama. I think it makes for good storytelling and a lot of fun. And this baby uh, gets kidnapped because uh, she is supposed to got some problem. And the Watcher shows up to show it's serious. And there's that, that sideways layout I was telling you about before. And they have to go to the planet Archon, uh, where these Archons are trying to kill somebody uh, because their rings are no longer going and they think it's an act of the gods. And the Avengers fly up into space and then you set everything right and then they kill uh, somebody anyway. And Cersei ends up then killing uh, the guy who the guy in charge who killed her. So and and it's pretty pretty dark at the end of this thing. And she's just like blossomed to dust, uh, which is which is very unusual at this point. And uh, do you know what you've done? Of course, I was an Avenger. She was avenging the death, right? So that gets into like that whole Captain America doesn't like to kill people, and you know the Avengers are drifting into a different direction, and it's uh, it's going to cause some conflict within the team, uh, of course. And this gal's sad. I don't know why she's sad, but she is, and she doesn't really want to hang out with Hercules at this point. And then we get the gatherers sort of prelude as an epilogue two at this point. So overall, those were pretty fun storylines. Uh, pretty neat stuff. Uh, I would say the the plots are, are very slow roll, but as they slow roll, they do compound into very interesting stuff under Bob Harris here. He does a good job of doing the serial storytelling, even if his pacing is a bit on the slow side. Um, I, I like Steve Epting's art. Uh, I liked that fill-in artist for Fear the Reaper even better. Um, and the art at the beginning in those annuals, not quite as much. So that's uh, <laughs> that's the art on those levels. You'll get a mixed bag when you get the annuals thrown in like that. But overall, I mean, this is a pretty consistent run because you get Harrison Epting for most of it. I mean, the fill-in artists aren't as good, of course. Um, and so it's solid. Uh, this is a good 7.5 out of 10, worth the read. Not gonna, I'm not going to list it as my favorite stuff. It's gonna. It's just a little too hard to care, but it is good nonetheless and fun, and that's what counts. All right, we'll see you next time. For another Epic Collection review, hit that like and subscribe button. Let's get this rolling. Love that the Epic Collections, the Epic Collections of all my reviews, by the way, uh, do a lot better uh, with click-throughs. So it looks like there's more people interested in Epic Collections than other books, which is good, because I've still got about 120-something Epics to read. <laughs> all right, I'll see you guys soon.